did just get new information that we still don't know what the verdict is, but that it is unanimous on all counts, no less. The jury's in their instructions. They did have the option to find unanimously one by one by one. Mm -hmm. Okay, we think they did conspiracy, right. uh, but maybe there wasn't a lie. We think they obstructed here, but maybe not there. The fact that we're hearing that it is unanimous and is on all counts, again, gives us a hint that in either direction, it was quickly evident to the jury, they, 12 men and women, Catherine is guilty of conspiracy. Louis is guilty of conspiracy. I'm getting this from federal court. Catherine K. Aloha has been found guilty of conspiracy. Louis K. Aloha has also been found guilty of conspiracy. Let's see if Bridget Namada is also seeing this uh, there on the front steps of federal court. And we will continue to interject as we hear more directly from inside the courtroom. Han also is guilty of conspiracy, according to Manolo Morales, who is live texting us from, with permission from inside of federal court. So Nguyen, um, uh, uh, Nguyen also, Bobby Nguyen, nephew, nephew of, uh, of uh, Catherine K. Aloha, Shira Ishii, not guilty. Interesting. We're not sure of which count that is. It appears we've been going down the conspiracy column. Because, again, the conspiracy is if one is in, all is in. And didn't it take all in to, to come across the board with that guilty verdict? That was, the, was, was what the philosophy of the Pinkerton perspective was, which right. you can't have a pinky toe in the pool. You're either swimming or you're dry on land. Yeah, and even if you know a little bit, if you have just even a small belief that somebody else had played a role, it doesn't matter. Again, little bit in equals all in. The one question I wanted to ask for you is, this, this didn't even go to the jury until about 4 o'clock yesterday afternoon. Usually the first day, it takes a couple hours just to come up to decide who's going to be the foreperson of this jury. And, and then 60 some odd pages of instructions. Boy, it seems like they must have been pretty quick in their thinking that they didn't even really even have to go through a lot of those pages for the fine tooth comb. It certainly gives indications that they had heard so much and seen so much convincing in either direction. Mm -hmm. Guilty. We have some new counts coming in. Uh, we'll hear these from federal court. Count two, which is obstruction, and began with Louis' action, guilty. Count two, Louis K. Aloha, guilty. Now, this stems back to his obstruction where he was charged with making statements about Gerard Puana in the last mailbox case. This is not the first mailbox case. Which resulted case. in a mistrial. It did. As you may recall, the uncle, Gerard Puana, mm -hmm. Catherine's uncle, had been charged with allegedly stealing Catherine's mailbox after what we now see that the jury believes was a conspiracy to set him up. Gerard had actually been taken to federal court over it. Louis was on the stand to say things about the uncle, and it turns out that what he said there in that 2014 trial, count three is in, excuse me, uh, and that is obstruction from Shira Ishii. Shira Ishii, not guilty of instruction. Obstruction. So Catherine, not guilty of obstruction. Louis, not guilty of obstruction. This is all about the Shira Ishii phone call. Derek Hahn, not guilty. But these are secondary charges Nguyen, to the primary, which is the main conspiracy. Yes. All of the obstruction that surrounded the phone call that Shira Ishii, two phone calls, that Shira Ishii took from the chief the morning after mm -hmm. the mailbox and allegedly had been charged with making then a phone call for something to Han. Um, count six, Catherine and Louis guilty. Catherine and Louis Kalo have been found guilty on count six and Bobby Nguyen of obstruction for Nguyen's grand jury statements about what he did or did not discuss with Niall Silva and what he did or did not do. At one point he had said, oh yes, I was there at the home, at Catherine Kaloha's right. home to retrieve the hard drive. I was there with Niall Silva. Niall Silva, as part of a plea deal for his own issues with the feds, said, no, oh, I really wasn't there. And all, and all three of them have been found guilty on that, that count of obstruction that stemmed from Bobby Nguyen's actions. It's very difficult for the defense attorney when you have somebody, the, the defense is a key argument was, well, these people first lied and then now they flipped, they turned for the prosecution or they were working with the federal government, they cannot be trusted. But as a prosecutor, you say, you got to go with what they said in court, just because they may have been mistruthful initially, uh, 
it's been proven otherwise. That's right. We did also get more information that on that same Niall Silva Bobby Nguyen interaction, that Derek Hahn was actually found guilty in that particular column as well. Shira Ishii, not guilty. So far, Shira Ishii has had some degree of, of luck here um, on, the, uh, on the different counts. And again, we're watching this happen li live, streaming from the courtroom uh, with Manolo Morales there, telling us text by text and one by one. And again, if you're wondering why we're not showing this to you, <laughs> unfortunately, cameras not allowed inside federal court. So we're That's just right. getting digitally, digitally the, the blow by blow as these verdicts are being handed down we, on the count eight now. We have another count where Shira Ishii escaped conviction on count eight, but all four others are guilty of obstruction when uh, Bobby Nguyen allegedly lied to the grand jury on statements about having coordinated with Niall Silva again, now the mm -hmm. gentleman who had, had reached a plea deal with the federal court. Uh, he had at the time of the first mailbox trial, Gerard Puana's trial, he was charged with obstructing justice for lying to the grand jury about what he and Niall Silva were allegedly coordinating about. Hey, what did you say to the court? What are you going to testify? There was mounds and mounds of texts and phone calls between them, according to the prosecutors, around that time of the 2014 trial. Catherine K. Aloha, Louis K. Aloha, Bobby Nguyen, and Derek Hahn have all been found guilty of obstruction for those actions. Gordon Shiraishi, no. Jury thought nothing to do with it. Interesting. Very, very interesting. <laughs> so one final uh, count charge 10. to be read. Count 10, which is false statements. Now this was one that Shira Ishii's defense attorney had really said, look, he didn't lie. He misremembered. That's not lying. That's trying to, trying to tell you the truth. He's just not recalling. All five defendants not guilty of false statements in connection to uh, what the feds had tried to say was Gordon Shira Ishii lying to them and again his attorney saying he didn't lie he told you that he he was misremembering or couldn't remember he was trying to remember um, i'm going to try to clarify here what happened in count two because we do know all of the other results howard okay go ahead in the meantime uh, we're going to get back as soon as we can as soon as possible to uh, bridget namata she's standing by outside the courtroom once these final uh Verdicts. We have the final verdicts right now, and I guess the, the judge at this point, the judge thanks the jury. At some point, Manola Morales is probably going to come downstairs as well. Uh, the big headline is uh, Catherine K. Loha, Louis K. Loha, both found guilty of conspiracy. Gordon Sher Ishii, not guilty and in relation to all those five counts. So, like you said, yeah. a very all lucky day counts, for him. Yes. But uh, Bobby Nguyen, uh, Derek Hahn, uh, kind of a mixed bag. But the, in the primary cases of uh, conspiracy, obstruction, it was guilty. Across the board for everybody but Gordon Shira Ishii. That's right. He really, um, you know, was clear as far as I can see mm -hmm. from what we're getting from this uh, quick read of the verdicts. It appears Gordon Shira Ishii uh, essentially vindicated in this. Yes, because he doesn't appear to have, um, he does not appear to have a guilty uh, verdict there in any of the columns. For sure. If you wonder why we're looking down, it's it's somewhat uh, like playing a, a, a court bingo game of trying to watch, you know, six counts, five people, five people, and five defendants. We do appear that Catherine Kalo has one of the two headliners here in this in this trial. She is guilty of four counts: conspiracy, obstruction, uh, three counts of obstruction. Same for her husband, conspiracy and three counts of obstruction. Pretty much the same now for all of them. All, well, all four, I should say. Catherine Kealoha, Louis Kealoha, Bobby Nguyen, their nephew, and Derek Hahn, uh, Louis's former colleague at HPD, uh, guilty of the big one, conspiracy, and three related counts of, of obstruction. Gordon Shira Ishii, also formerly HPD, dodged. Uh, the one thing that you think about initially is uh, a, a retrial or, or an, appeal an appeal or something of that fact. And, of course, for Catherine and initially for Louis K. Mm -hmm. uh, funds became something that was very critical. Uh, they were taking away that right to be able to uh, purchase, if you will, the most expensive, the best uh, defense trial attorneys. They were given public defenders. Uh, in the case of Catherine K. Aloha, Ms. Kajiwada, and, uh, where and do they Rustin stand? Barbie and from Rustin Kailoha. Barbie for Kailoha. So this is very interesting. The, the federal judge could 
have the discretion to tell us how much has been spent so far. I have been asking. Mm -hmm. The response that I got from the court was that the uh, because there would probably be some appeals and because it could prejudice, you know, the 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 public's uh, view of that. There, the court, federal court declined to tell me how much has been spent from federal taxpayers on behalf of. Catherine and Louis, and I believe one of the other three had, had one as well. Um, but again, you know, the federal taxpayers are, are paying this. There is a case in uh, state court right now of whether or not the, the county taxpayers, same right. two pockets, right, <laughs> were federal taxpayers as well. And the Louis Kealoha had been successful in front of the Honolulu Police Commission in making a case that his defense should be covered by city taxpayers because all of this happened while he was on the job as as police chief. Now, the corporation counsel just recently, just weeks ago, filed a suit in in mm -hmm. state court to block that move by the Honolulu Com Police Commission uh, to try to block any further taxpayer dollars from going into this. Hundreds of thousands of dollars has already been spent on behalf of the Kealohas for their defense in various state matters and ethics commissions hearings and that. So the tab has already been rung up. Whether or not it will rung up, be rung up further remains to be seen. And on top of that, Louis K. Loja, so controversially, uh, walked away with a pretty good chunk of money that was approved by the police commission at the time when he was, did he step down, was he forced out, whatever the case was. He walked away with a, a pretty good stipend that was challenged too, true? Right, $250,000. Right. But as far as some research that I had done, I, I could tell that a big amount of that was spent fairly soon mm -hmm. on um, a condominium in Kahala where they're currently right. living um, around the same time when they knew they would be heading toward, they'd already gotten their target letters, they were already, well, Louis was unemployed in that point, he was retired, forcibly retired, let's say, Catherine was already on unpaid leave, they appear, from the research I did, they appear to have spent about $130,000 toward a condo in Kahala that they currently live at and pay on top of that, you know, the fee as condo owners know, the monthly fees. In this case, it's one where there's ground rent. And it begged the question in one of my recent Always Investigating reports, if they had the money to do that, again, why are they entitled to exactly. these federal <clears throat> um, uh, attorneys that are appointed under the um, assertion that, well, we can't afford that? Can't afford. But in the meantime, even a federally appointed attorney is still making a pretty decent uh, hourly well, wage. Which is from our pocket, not theirs. From our pocket, it could be still in the two, three hundred dollars per hour range, but versus uh, if you're paying for the best private attorney, yeah. uh, it could be double, triple that amount. That's right. Now, a private attorney did recently join uh, Catherine's side, Earl right. Partington, and it was said that some family from her side, undisclosed family, is paying for his bill. Now, one caveat to all of this. If, after the dust settles, it is found that there was any sort of pot of money, uh, let's say the, the county comes along and wants to pay some of Louis Kaloha's tabs, um, or if they find that there was any misrepresentation in the Kaloha's ability to afford, right? Wait, you could afford that condo, mm -hmm. why not this way? The judge can always go back and ask for reimbursement to what's called the CGA, or the Criminal Justice okay. Fund that pays for it. Remains to be seen. The feds raised a red flag about it in some recent court filings, asking the judge to take a look. It hasn't happened yet. But we'll see. Just as somebody who's been closer to this trial than the average person, uh, and, and don't want to lead you down any road of speculation, but when you hear basic conversation in the community, a lot of people seem to say, why did Louis K. Aloha seem to stand by her side from the beginning? Uh, maybe there was a thought that she was an orchestrator of this, and maybe he was an unwilling partner, but at some point, found that he was too deep. I, I, again, this is all, I, I don't want you to speculate, but well, it's an interesting dynamic. The, the two of them, even when there was the firefighter from Maui that she presumably had an affair with, he was still right there holding her hand side by side with her through and through. And what we know now today, because of the hard work of 12 men and women, it is because he was guilty mm -hmm. of being involved in what appears to be a very deep conspiracy to frame the uncle, at least according to jurors in this case.